whenever I'm involved. Ah, okay, maybe Masha, you would like to say something about recording before I kick off. Yeah, I'm very sorry. Okay, so I put it on recording now. Is that okay? Now it is recording already. Good, okay, perfect. So whenever I'm called to help a struggling Toastmasters club or currently I'm, they asked me to serve as a club sponsor, my first question is show me your club success plan. Uh, I have been in a on and off relationship with club success plans. I personally think it's over-engineered. It's just too much, too many pages. But now what I came up this year is a simplified club success plan. Let me share it with you here as a file. I hope this works. So there are two files. One is a Word file and the other one is a PDF file. Uh, share in the chat and I'm also sharing it now here with the help of screen sharing and here we go. So what I came up with is a one pager simplified club success plan. It has four section, the team, the purpose, we will come to that thing in a few minutes and then two sections about education, acquisition and general setup. And so when I sit down with new clubs or struggling weak understrength clubs, I invite them to fill the club success plan. If they have it already, we can look into it together, but I, I want to see it because I strongly believe in a sentence that goes like this. What doesn't sell on paper doesn't sell in reality. What doesn't sell on paper doesn't sell in reality. So we have to have something in written. We have to have like a model on paper. And then we try to put this into reality. Let me quickly guide you through this club success plan. So of course it starts with the team. Who is there? Maybe who is still there whenever I'm called to to struggling clubs, oftentimes they don't have the seven or eight people taking responsibility anymore. So I would like to see who is acting there. Then the purpose, we will come to that. And then, as I said, the sections about education, acquisition, and I encourage them to aim for five DCP points and to help them. I came up with this table to split it into digestible pieces. So I want to encourage them and show them that these five DCP points are possible. And there are questions like, is it realistic for us to achieve this? What can we do to reach that goal? So here I realized that when you cut it into digestible pieces, it's better for people to grasp and to gain that optimism that they can achieve at least these five points. And at the core of it is the purpose. Why am I so keen on encouraging them to do a purpose workshop and to, for everybody involved to have crystal clear what the purpose is? It's there for us to motivate us. It's telling us why do we exist? Why does our Toastmasters Club still make sense? Maybe after a time of crisis, and what emotional stories are linked to this. And when we learn about ourselves, why do we exist? We can also use this proudly to scream it out to the world and encourage other people to join us because most of the time, the purpose of a Toastmasters Club makes a lot of sense. Good, let me switch the screen sharing to the simple purpose workshop that I created. I conducted it once and I encouraged a group of Toastmasters clubs to conduct their own purpose workshop too. Now, screen sharing is not working as expected. Now, this is the slide set and I will quickly guide you through this and there will be also an interactive part our why. So most or any of the large corporations, organizations, they have a purpose. 
This is the one of Microsoft, the one of Disney, and the one of Tesla. None of them mention computers, movies, theme parks, electric cars or batteries. It's always something bigger that they aim for. Here at Toastmasters, we also have a vision and mission. You can see them here. And these sentences are always, yeah, telling us what is the contribution, what do we do, and what is the effect on people's lives. So we have this as Toastmasters International for the whole global organization. And we also have this for our clubs. And always these sentences are structured in this way. First, the contribution and then the effect. And we want to have this for our individual Toastmasters clubs on the ground. We want to have this too. I told you already because it's motivating, it's attractive for others to join us. It reminds us why it makes sense that we are around, why it still makes that we are makes sense that we are around. And the, the way to learn about it is also a beautiful process for everybody involved. And I hope that I can inspire you tonight with this. The idea of the purpose workshop or the structure is like this. We learn about personal stories, things that we experienced at our Toastmasters club. Then we think about what was the contribution, what was the impact it had on my personal life. Then we try to find out what can be the greater effect. And then we draft these sentences. It looks like this, right? So when we go through the process, we first hear about the stories, the contribution, the effect, and then we come up with first drafts of these sentences. And this is the structure, five steps. And Masha, can you indicate how much time we have left here for my part? Oh, well, we have enough time. We're over. Can you make it specific, please? Yeah. Um, the break will be at in 20 minutes. Are you sure? This is not what I learned from the, it says, the program. It says 20, uh, 5 past 8 is the end of my session. Yeah, that's in 20 minutes. That's in 20 minutes. OK, perfect, perfect, good. OK, um, I hope that you are all ready. Please give me a chat message in case you are not prepared to do some table topic speaking tonight. Otherwise, I will allow myself to just, I will allow myself to just ask you to share your thoughts. So I don't see any thumbs down. So I can just use all of you, so mm. to speak. <laughs> Good, uh, Ivo, can you hear me? Perfect, loud and clear. Yes, please do share emotional stories that you experienced at your Toastmasters Club recently. Please yeah. share emotional stories things that you experienced in your Toastmasters club that touched you emotionally that you can still remember? Yeah. Uh, one thing, we have a very new member and uh, she's my mentee. And she came just three weeks ago with a sorry story that uh, her brother-in-law died surprisingly. And her sister was totally down, of course, and she's very connected to her sister and her late uh, husband. And uh, her sister came to her and she lived with her for two weeks. And then there was uh, the funeral and she had to give a funeral speech. And furthermore, the week after the funeral, her eldest daughter was marrying. So she had to give uh, the speech as a bride's mother because her husband died as well in young years uh, at the wedding. And I trained with her and I coached her for two very different speeches. And this was very emotional for her, for me as well, on another level, of course, but uh, still very emotional. And she did both speeches, the funeral as well as the wedding speech, excellent. She 
got a lot of positive feedback for both of those speeches and this made us both happy. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing, Ivo. So now we have the emotional story and the next question is, what was the specific contribution of your Toastmasters Club? You gave us some idea already. You sat down with her. You worked on the speeches together. Can you elaborate a bit more? Yeah. What was the specific contribution of your Toastmasters Club? Um, why was it important that the Toastmasters Club was around for this particular story? Uh, two years ago, we decided uh, in our uh, team that we want to have every new member to have a mentor mm -hmm. and that we uh, wanted to take mentoring uh, as it was meant. Yep. And uh, we have so good experiences. Nobody wants to cut this program again. Everyone says that's the best decision we made especially mm -hmm. since we did it before Corona. And even yep. during Corona, it was very good mm -hmm. to have this program. And so a functioning mentoring system, very yeah. well. Great, great. Uh, only and Ivo, can I, um, um, can I ask you, what did you get out of this story? Of course, you went the extra mile, you helped that lady. What was in there for you? Um. To have a member who is uh, who loves the mentoring program and will be <laughs> a, mentor, a good mentor as well, and this will stabilize mm -hmm. our club further. We are we have a very good uh, run at the moment in our club. We had mm -hmm. uh, have over ten members, new members since July, and uh, the situation is very positive and. Mm -hmm. We have to keep care that this goes on like this. Yeah. So to summarize, we can say you benefit from a stable operation in the yeah. club. There is no risk of the club failing soon yeah. or to spin it on the positive side. You have a great place to learn. You enjoy going there. Um, can we find something even more tangible that you got out of this? Does it maybe support your relationship? relationships your business can you come up with anything like this i'm so picky here because Personally, this is what uh, individuals ask right they want to get out something they invest time and energy and they want to get out something so please yeah yeah toastmasters gave me so much i mm -hmm. i'm uh, right now i'm 56 and i wish i had met uh, toastmasters 30 years ago Uh -huh. uh, I've been a CEO for a media company for many years and I gave many speeches, but I was reading them. Mm -hmm. And I started talking freely when I joined Toastmasters and that's so much more fun and my speeches are so much better now. So I have a very personal <laughs> plus as well from Toastmasters. And uh, since I had this plus, I try to give it to others as well. Super, super. Thank you very much, Ivo, for sharing emotional stories, the effect, the impact that it had on your life. So can I ask somebody that listened to us, can you come up with a sentence already? You listened to Ivo, he shared his story the contribution and the effect. And give us the name of your Toastmasters Club again, Ivo. Rhetorik Club Wiesbaden. Rhetorik Club Wiesbaden. So anybody on the call, can you come up with two sentences? One about the contribution and one of the effect of Toastmasters Wiesbaden. Who wants to give it a try? David, I see your mic is already open. Yeah. Would you like to try? Yeah, we can say that Toastmasters Wiesbaden is a compassionate club. You know, a sense that, you know, you, you saw a person in need and you decided to address that need. So the contribution is they are compassionate. And what is the effect that it has on the lives of the members? Supporting them. Mm -hmm you know, give them that, that um, assistance to achieve the task. Uh -huh. 
preparing for different situations? Yes, yes. Maybe not ideal for public relations. <laughs> so it should be positive, right? It should be as specific as possible, uh, but not too specific. Remember Tesla, there is no, they don't speak about cars, not of batteries. It's to accelerate our, and they always have the world, all these great companies, they have the world in there, in their mission statements. We want to accelerate the transition to sustainable energy. So it's somehow specific, it's general, it's always positive. It's always positive. So anybody else can give us a first, it's just first draft, we are brainstorming here. What could be the new purpose? Two sentences for Toastmasters B Spartan. Alex, open the mic, please. Toastmasters B Spartan, you um ready to speak freely or you learn how to speak freely <laughs> in order to to in order to enrich uh, presentations and public speaking mm -hmm. um, makes the world a better place <laughs> <laughs> why not why not and think big what i'm also teaching now i only discovered the 10x mentality back in july has anybody heard about a 10x mentality? Please raise your hand, Markus. Can you explain it, what it is? They are to think even 10 times or more bigger than you would like to think normally. Yep. So you do it for what you want to achieve and you also do it for the effort that goes into projects. And Remember, we are here in a workshop, a purpose workshop, and we can allow ourselves to think big. Inspired from these great organizations, super successful organizations, we are free to do this also for our Toastmasters Club. So don't be shy in thinking big. And if you feel like, include the world, uh, the word world into the purpose statements. That's not a problem, but maybe you also want, just, just want to do this for Wiesbaden. So you could include the word uh, Wiesbaden in the purpose statement. The official club mission statement is not bad, right? That the one that we have on each official Toastmasters publication. However, I like the idea of adapting it to the individual Toastmasters clubs. When you travel the world, which is easier than ever, thanks to Zoom. We can attend Toastmasters everywhere. Before COVID, I also had the passion to attend as many different Toastmasters Club sessions as possible. I also, when I was area director and I learned that each Toastmasters Club has a, a very individual character. They are all under the same Toastmasters roof, but how they do it, how the standard agendas look like, what they emphasize, it's, it's very different and why not, especially when you are competing in the same city. Imagine here in Zurich, we have 20 Toastmasters clubs. It makes sense that you distinguish mm -hmm. yourself. So based on this purpose statement, I encourage all of you to conduct these workshops and to come up with your individual purpose statement at a given point in time. And I say, do it for clubs that are struggling, do it with inspire, the clubs that you are coaching to conduct such a workshop but i also say let's do this once or twice a year even for successful clubs to remind ourselves what makes us successful what keeps us in the business what makes us attractive for others and i think we have five more minutes to go so i want to try a second one adam can you hear me Yep, Mine I can hear open. you. Perfect. So David, would you feel comfortable of sharing another, an emotional story that you experienced at your yep. Toastmasters Club recently? Mm -hmm. Something that touched you emotionally. So I was listening to one speaker whom I'd known probably more than 10 years. And I thought to myself, you know, his speeches are very interesting, but I just thought, he hasn't developed very much. And as one of his new paths that he was given, he gave the icebreaker speech. 
And during the course of that particular speech, I started to feel ashamed because I discovered he was actually dyslexic. And as I say, you know, I've known the gentleman for close to 10 years. Okay, we're, we're not, um, you know, kind of close friends meeting up every other week. But, but I thought to myself, you know, it's, you know, th this guy needs a shake. He hasn't changed much in this time within the club. And this really was, a, was an eye opener for me to, you know, reach out to him and to support him. Yeah. So, you know, it was a... Very good. A sound reflection on, on uh -huh. yeah. Let's move to step number two in the workshop. What was the specific contribution of your Toastmasters Club? Give us the name of your Toastmasters Club and then try to formulate the specific contribution for this very story. So Erling and Toastmasters Club is a supportive environment. You know, and I'm thinking, you know, kind of, um, yes, that's, you know, part of the, of the club's mission statement. But you could also say, we do what we see, yeah? Mm -hmm. It's not just simply a word. How, how are you going to help your members? How are you going to help the members gain, gain that confidence? You know, gain that um, confidence, give them that energy, mm -hmm. you know? And this particular gentleman, you know, he, he makes no odds. Uh, he's a designer. He has to present in front of people. Yeah. Ah, very good. Now you're leading us already to the impact. So he's a designer. And what yeah. is the impact on him? And I'm asking in particular, what is the effect on his relationships, his business, um, maybe his family life? So to increase his confidence to speak more openly mm -hmm. and also to speak more confidently, because you can imagine. But let's make it David, um, even more specific yeah. because we want to learn. Sorry that I'm here, that I'm so um, strict yeah, yeah. here. We want to mm -hmm. learn what's in it for me. Why should I be part of Toastmasters Erlangen, pay the $90 or more, come there every second week? What's in it for me? How is it supporting family life, romantic relationships? business <laughs> right from, from the business side yeah um giving him the confidence to speak out about something he believes in yeah to speak more vigorously about something mm -hmm. he believes in rather okay. than speaking out timidly okay yeah um, thank you very much, David, for sharing. So it, it depends on the group which you are conducting this workshop with. You can do it with the, only the club officer team. You can also do it with the whole club. Um, table topics um, can do. You can do this with table topics. You can uh, do an interview style like I did, or you can just the, the five questions that I have here. You can give them out as table topics topics. And yeah, depending on the crowd you have, you can make this really personal. So ask them again and again, if you feel comfortable, how did it, did your Toastmasters involvement support your business? Ideally, somebody says my, uh, my sales went up or I, I, I saved my romantic relationship or I'm a, some, I, I did this with, fathers um, of small children they tell you i just became a better listener i can i'm being i'm more uh, empathetic with with small children and they 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 claim that toastmasters helped them so we are looking for these really emotional personal stories it depends on the crowd where people feel comfortable to share however when you make it that deep uh, people just in the workshop, in the 60 minutes, usually I say, do this, uh, allocate 60 minutes for this. They, they, they realize during the workshop how powerful their involvement in Toastmasters is. And this hopefully helps them sailing through tough times, maybe investing more time. At least in our Toastmasters Corp program, it, it, I think it helped that we did the workshop. We were in a kind of crisis situation since we did it people see the value of their involvement in a, in a clearer way. That, that's what I 
believe at this point in time. Good. Two more minutes to go. Any questions? And please challenge me hard on this because, again, this is one of my unconventional ideas, not part of the official Toastmasters curriculum. Please go ahead. I wonder how long do you give them time or how do you, is there a moderator? If you do it, let's say you're coming in as a club coach, uh, you have a set of officers, let's say you don't have all of them, but you have four uh, or five. What, how much time would you like plan in? What are like the steps as a moderator? So I told you already, I have not acted as a club coach officially. I only did it with, uh, with, the, with my home Toastmasters mm -hmm. corporate program here at the bank. Uh, we allocated 60 minutes. That's the usual format that we have for our lunchtime learning session, 60 minutes. And we conducted it with table topics. I think five, six people delivered this as table topic speeches, one to two minutes. Mm -hmm. And in the end, we noted everything down and tried to come up with our purpose statement drafts. That's what mm -hmm. I... Mm -hmm. experience, what I did, what I conducted already, what I encourage mm -hmm. others to do. You know, maybe an idea if, say, for example, a club coach did it with the club officers first, just to get an idea, I kind of feel, because by and large, um, you know, I would say that maybe 50% of club officers are happy or, or you know, semi-confident in their role. Um, but if, you, if you're not comfortable yourself, you know, why perhaps do that in front of a club, you know, use it as a training ground, say, with the, the club officers in the first instance. You know, I, I, I would have no qualms to do it either way, you know. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there are different, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, it, it depends. So my aim is to encourage presidents of Toastmasters clubs to, to do this. I encourage you as club coaches to inspire presidents to do this or somebody from the top three uh, executives, president, VPE, mm -hmm. VPM. I think it shouldn't be done by the external club coach. I always... Yeah. For my taste, it's also that the club coach should stay behind the scenes, should be a senior advisor to the top three club officers. Um, but so I discovered this purpose workshop, by the way, it's inspired by the famous Simon Sinek, uh, Start With Why, TED Talk. I had the pleasure to participate in a workshop that was done here at UBS from an external professional trainer. So I have been using it only once in reality. I'm now sharing it with you. Um, I'm, I shared, by the way, all the material with you, both the simplified club success plan, uh, also an editable version as Word file, and you also have the slides. Um, so my final words are take it, uh, no copyrights, uh, play with it. I strongly believe in reminding ourselves, why do we exist? Why do we still invest? What is the purpose? What is the why of our Toastmasters Club? And it will help you recharge batteries and unleash energy, motivation, friendship to go on to sail through tough times. At the same time, it's useful for those that are successful already to remind them what are our success factors? What do we want to emphasize? What, what do we want to invest more in? And then take this purpose statement, scream it out to the world and attract new Toastmasters people. Mm -hmm. With this, happy to hand back to you, Masha. Thank you very much, Andreas. I'm sorry, I'm just stopping recording.